Hey guys, Mr. Popsy here, Greg Lynch, Durham, PA. We can see here large abscess on the scalp, and this is something that's been kind of coming and going for a couple years for him. And um, very cool, he found us on YouTube. <laughs> so he's seen Mr. Popsy videos before, and I appreciate uh, him letting us record so we can show how proper drainage on these should happen, how it should go down. You can see here, it looks like there's some pretty good crust and a dry scab right on the surface. A lot of fluctuance, I can feel probably purulent discharge in there. We're going to numb him up as best we can. We're gonna put quite a bit in, let it sit, kind of get some in the pocket too, and let it sit for a couple minutes. And that should get us, you know, partial to full, um, or anesthetized, I should say. <laughs> and so we're gonna clean him up a little bit, get some numbing in, and then uh, we're gonna do an IND for him and do a culture. And we might even do some packing depending on how big the pocket is. So thanks again for him for sharing and we'll get everything prepped and ready. Okay, guys, Mr. Popsit here. This is our large abscess behind the ear, just sort of the mastoid process, actually, which is the little bone behind the ear. You can see here we have got him actually fairly numb. It looks kind of white here. Now that he's numb, I'm going to actually pull out from the scab some of his hair here, which has crusted into that because he's been leaking for a while. Good. There is a fluid pocket. I don't know how much fluid we're going to get out if we're dealing more with a uh, bacterial infection here or an inflamed cyst. Feeling any of that? Not bad with the hair pull? No. Good. Just getting some of this crusted hair off of here. We have the culture here, right? Yeah. Perfect. And we got just a little bit coming right out here on the top. I'm going to get that purulence right there. Looking good. Plenty of pus to send out. Hopefully get an answer. And lift some of this hair out of the way. And sometimes on abscesses, I, we put quite a bit of Lido in there and then I let him sit for a little bit, let that infuse down into the pocket. And we're gonna see if we see cyst contents in here, that's gonna tell us we're dealing with a inflamed or burst cyst. If you have a pinch here at all, let me know, okay? I'm just gonna do a little cut. Nothing there? Good, that looks good. Mm. Just about a centimeter there. Okay, and a little pressure here. Here we go, so it's just fluids. So far, and a little bit of blood. Once I get down to the bottom of the pocket, if you're feeling too much pressure, let me know if you feel any pain. That's Just good. stings. Though. Just a little sting, yeah. okay. That's normal. I actually got a pretty decent amount out so far. A lot of pus in there for sure. I don't feel a cyst anywhere, but that pocket goes all the way back here and up to here, so it's a good size pocket. Very nice. That lump is already almost flat, which is good. Not much pain, just a little pinch here and there? Yeah. Good. Pretty good. Yeah, you're doing great. Just a little Q-tip in here. Looking for loculation, so I'm going nice and soft. Does that hurt at all down there? No. Good. Coming all the way around the pocket here. 
A little bit. A little bit there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this side. Mm -hmm. Stay away from that side and then back here in the back pocket, corner pocket, I should say, right there. That goes all the way to here, I can feel it. A little loculation there, scar tissue, like a little pocket. No pain on that one? Just a little bit. Just a little, okay. That's good. You can feel some of that break up. Now we're gonna get some blood because we were pushing down in there. And it is a sensitive area, but still no cyst contents. Unless they came out first when it drained the last day or two, because it looks like it's been draining. There's a little bit of possibly cyst wall right there. That's possible. Do we have uh, forceps with no teeth? No. Let's see if we have them. I do see this little stringer coming out of here that could be some cyst wall. I'm gonna tug on that, see if we get any. That's just skin peeling there. Fluctuant mass, they would call this. It's just oozing and seeping. Johnny on the spot there. All right there. Could be a little cyst wall little lining possibly this is just peeling skin from him being so inflamed and that's what's happening I always say if it's healing it's peeling that means it's retracting it swells up and then as it retracts skin just starts sloughing like this so it's a good sign that he did drain and it was going down a little but there's quite a bit in there I'm gonna try and give him another shot on this side so I can reach in there just a little any pinch over here at all? You feel that? No. No? Nope. Good. How about there now? A little bit, yeah. A little bit there, okay. Yeah. Nothing there really? No, Good. No, I feel, I feel something. Yeah. Most of it's going in the pocket, but that's okay. A little here. Okay. Get some of that fluid out. mixing with blood and you want to come from every angle because these pockets will be do deep down in here pushing left to right right to left front to back very good and we're, we're gonna pack this so I'll bring that out in a sec too you got it already yeah I uh, actually had two others so because he was feeling sensitive there I'm going from Q-tip to we're gonna go to a little bit, something a little bit stronger here, but still blunt. I'm not scraping a, a curette in there. How about right here, anything? Oh, no. That's deep, it goes straight down. Right on the bottom there. This is where we were tender, anything here? No. Yeah, we got them pretty numb here on the bottom. I'm scraping up some. You can hear it click. It's like a little loculation there. A little pocket. Oh, oh right yeah, there. Yeah, right there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. over here, you're sensitive towards the front right there. That's all the poking we'll likely need to do. See right there, a little bit of what looks like possibly cyst. You can see that white starting to come up. Likely broke that free right there with those oculations kind of going down right here. So likely was a cyst. It's kind of dissolved most likely. So we're not getting a lot of it. Of course, I didn't see what drained at your house yesterday either. <laughs> but it's like a pus. Yeah, just pus came out. It looked like 
Yeah, well, not just like white stuff, but yeah. it's the pus coming together. I don't Puri know. Purulent discharge, they call it. Yeah. So that's good here. This is where he's a little sensitive, but it was deep down in there. It's really a deep pocket. Here, possibly. It's just the skin peeling, I think. Good. So when we're getting predominantly blood, it's just a, a very sensitive, deep pocket there. We keep scraping. We'll just create more blood, and we'll keep pushing that out. So once you get to that point, we're going to put in some packing now. And that packing will get out in 24 to 48 hours. And that's going to soak up some of this what he, blood he's producing. And get him on an antibiotic and see what the culture comes back as. And if you want to just kind of wipe that a little with saline, I'm going to go get the packing. Looks very clean. Looking good. All right, so we have some iodoform gauze here. He was tender in a couple pockets, so we're going to go gently and slow here. This is a very large pocket from here to here, all the way here, and it goes very deep. So put some packing in here. It's going to soak up some of that. Um, in the past, he went somewhere and they gave him just seven days of antibiotics. Yep. Yeah, for an abscess this large, that's a little shy of what I like to do, two or three weeks. Rarely all the way up to a month, but two to three weeks is usually adequate to get it completely dry. That's quite a bit of packing there. We'll do a little wrap for him, likely. And a lot of people we talk about always that acid base shift, almost ad nauseum. <laughs> we talk about it every video where anytime we have an inflammatory reaction like this with all this redness that you see, that becomes an acidic wound a lot of times. That shift from more of a basic what the skin is um, becomes more acidic and lidocaine is acidic. So when we put lidocaine in there, it just doesn't take as well. There's a shift from more basic to acidic and that affects the lidocaine's ability to anesthetize the area. So that's why even though we put quite a bit in there, certain spots, he had hot spots and still felt it. And we expect that and it was not a surprise. I just don't go hard in those areas. And we weren't getting lots of cyst contents. It was more fluid. So We'll see what the culture says. We'll use this to kind of dry up that pocket and see him back in just 24 to 48 hours and take this out, see how the antibiotics treating him. And it's gonna drain for a couple days here, but this should help quite a bit getting all that pus out and making a little bit bigger opening for it to drain. So that's good. Very good, you can feel that's filled all the way across. So we'll let that do its job for the next day or two and then see him back. And that's a pretty standard IND there of a large abscess. Um, cut, yeah, I just fold it up. I might cut a little bit off so not so much is hanging off. You should feel relief and sleep a lot better, which is a good thing, because that, all that pressure is of that fluid that was in there is out and cut right into there. Good. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yes, absolutely. That's a, that's a big thing. And then we're going to put like a little packing on top here and a little wrap um, just kind of around the head there, just so you have something to soak up for tonight. Okay. And then tomorrow, like late afternoon, we'll see you and pull this out. There'll be some fluid there and some blood, but um, it should start to go down pretty quickly in just next couple days. Perfect. Okay, guys, pretty standard IND there. Thanks again to him for sharing. Very cool. He found us on YouTube and got here. <laughs> so we always appreciate him sharing that because I like to show these large abscesses. A lot of people are kind of scared to get down in them or they just make a little cut and press a little bit. You really got to make a, a little bit over a centimeter opening and get in there, whether it's with a Q-tip or, or something blunt. Try to numb that base as much as you can. Break up a little loculation. Sometimes there's just 20 or 30% more that's retained in there that will actually reform the cyst. 
if you can get it out, you can help them a lot going down the road. So hopefully this dries up nice for them. We're going to do follow-ups and uh, keep you posted. Thanks for popping by. Okay. All right, guys, Mr. Pops in here on the big, large abscess on the mastoid on the back, um, right back post uh, scalp here. We got a 24 hour follow up. Here we go. And these are always, he had some drain in here. We knew we were going to get some draining on this one because it was a pretty good size one. Come across here. Not a ton though, actually. That's pretty good. Just went through in a couple areas there. I'm going to leave a little bit there to pick up anything that comes out. Now the hairs, you'll feel a little kind of tingling, kind of odd sensations here as we pull this out. Okay. It's a little bit of hair attachment there as well, so. Here we go. It's going to feel kind of weird. Sorry. A little, is that hair? It's hair, I'm sure it's Yeah. There we go. I got the hair off of there. So that's what we normally see. Going great. When we get to the bottom, you'll feel a little tug again. Because we had a lot in there. Doing great. Perfect. So that's quite a bit of packing we got out there. That looks good. Get that out of the way. And not a ton of drainage here, actually. It's a good sign. I don't see a lot of fluid. A little bit of tenderness there with pressure, yeah? Yep. Okay. A little bit of pus right there, I see, right here. Just a little bit right by the entrance there. What we should start to see though, is this drying up. We only have 24 hours of the antibiotic. So um, you didn't really drain much out of the pocket. And there's maybe a tablespoon here still left in the pocket. Um, I don't feel, it feels pretty hollow when I'm feeling around. You can see the indentation from my finger there. Um, these hairs are just kind of crusted there. So we're going to clean that up for you too and put a new bandage on. And this will seep for four to five days, okay? Yeah. There we go. And as that antibiotic, we're going to wait for the culture to come back. 50% of these will have a uh, bacterial infection. Another 50 will just be mostly inflammation, surprisingly enough. That's pretty good there. Getting a little bit out. It's nice and firm all the way out here, regular tissue. So this, you can see that redness has gone down a lot. You're getting almost a normal skin tone through here. Still a little pink on this side where you were tender. So 24 hours, that's pretty good. Um, getting all that, that fluid that was caught in there out. And all we got to do is just a little bit at the base. Good, yeah. Nothing there, nothing there. That's good. So she's going to clean that up. Um, I don't usually do packing again. Um, some people do. Usually one day of packing. Or it's one to two days they recommend. Um, that kind of gets that initial drying up. The little cut's already kind of healed in, even in 24 hours at the edge there. It's a little smaller than it was yesterday. Um, that will continue. We want it to be open for three to five days and like that third or fourth day, it'll start to close up and then the antibiotic will dry everything up from the, uh, inside out. And then we'll recheck. We're going to have you back kind of quick in like a week, get these hairs. We're going to pull the hairs out and kind of clean it up for you there too. And then we should see in a week, a lot of that redness down, this will be closed and it'll still be a little puffy, but you'll reabsorb the rest of that. So it's looking good. That's what we expect when we take that out. We didn't have as much drainage as, as I thought you would. You just had a little bit on here. There was a little bit still left in there, but that we got out with just some gentle pressure. So no need to go digging around in there again. We got so much fluid out the first time and in one week we'll recheck. Okay, thanks for popping by. We'll get them all cleaned up and thanks to him for sharing. Mr. Pops it here. We have the mastoid abscess, that mastoid process, which is the bone right here. One week follow-up and this was a pretty good abscess. It was draining like crazy. 
very red and very large and it's gone down now it's just a little pink in the middle where he's still draining there but this is looking great and uh, an update to that is it was mrsa so methicillin resistant staph aureus infection and that can sometimes happen if we just scratch the area and we've been exposed to it um, it gets on the skin and there could have been a cyst in there that was getting inflamed and the bacteria gets into the pore and makes it an even bigger abscess than an inflamed cyst and i'm pretty sure when I recall, we did see some cyst particles coming out, but mostly it was purulent discharge, and that would make sense with an MRSA infection. So we look at um, when we do the culture, and we had them on a, a sulfa antibiotic, but the minimal inhibitory concentration was a little bit high. So we always look at the MIC when we're doing cultures. Is, is the antibiotic susceptible or resistant? Uh, is that bacteria to that particular antibiotic? And then what is the minimal inhibitory concentration? And we want a low minimal inhibitory concentration, meaning that you don't need much of the antibiotic to kill the bacteria. So we're going to switch him to a tetracycline, which it had a uh, 1 to 10 ratio. So it's 10 times better than um, the one we had them on, which was working and it was susceptible, but sometimes it doesn't take it out all the way and you'll still see a week later he's getting a little bit of drainage and it's still pink. We're going to change for 10 to 14 days on this new antibiotic and that should dry it up completely and we got the contents out and he should feel a lot better. And we'll do like a one or two month follow up now once everything's dried up and see if we feel any cyst there and then go from there. So thanks to him for sharing. It's a, it's a good case. It was a, a cyst in there and an MRSA infection. So you see how much comes out and how angry that looked when he first came in. It was so red. That's typical of MRSA. It'll look like a bad infection, but it just has like another kind of aspect to it. It looks a little angrier usually. And uh, so that's why we culture on those ones that look really angry. That's why I cultured this one too. So only 50% of inflamed cysts will even culture out a bacteria. So that, that was pretty interesting. Um, and it looks like he's doing a lot better one week post and he feels a lot better and he's sleeping a lot better. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for popping by. That was a good case. And that's it. Hey, guys, Mr. Popsit here. If you like what you just saw, make sure to pop all the buttons. See you soon.